traders from around the world, what's going on? It's Ricky Cadden back again with another real life stock review with Real Life Trading Australia. I trust you guys are doing absolutely amazing. And I want to talk a little, a little bit about the volatility in the market, what's been going on, what my thoughts are, and uh, where I think we're going to be heading moving forward. Um, so taking a look at the SPY, the SPY. Now, what's interesting about this is this volatility doesn't actually remind me of what happened back here in May. Um, this was very, very deep, very, very different. Um, we did have a nice steady pullback, whereas here we are getting a lot of gaps and a lot of choppiness, a lot of people getting trapped. Um, so this actually reminds me of what happened back in November of 2018. And if I were to kind of pinpoint where I think we could potentially be um, in relation to where we were back in back in October, November, um, I would have to say it is about the 8th of November. Um, so just keeping that in mind, if we do roll over here, I'm just going to draw this bar pattern uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what this would look like against the chart. If we had a pullback, right? If we did have a pullback here and we broke below these lows, most likely we're going to come down to this level here at about 273. Makes total sense. Um, and then this is where all the, bull, the bulls will hop in bullish, thinking we're going to kind of V bottom and bounce out of here. Um, and then obviously we're most likely going to trade higher. Now, if we do trade higher, um, you can see the 50 day moving average here has already been rejected once. And if I kind of extend this line out a little bit, that would be potentially what it could look like. So, I mean, this is just my thoughts. This is worst case scenario, guys. Um, I don't think the market is just going to completely just fall off a cliff. However, this particular, um, this particular activity that's going on in the market, I know we do have the FOMC minutes uh, being reported tomorrow and um, the market is realistically just waiting for that to come out to see how we're going to react. Um, potentially, if I just go to ES, the E-minis, so potentially this could be a cute little bullish flag. We are getting a little bit of um, bullishness, although uh, it's not a great deal. We did resist the 50 day EMA on the daily and um, pretty much if we break down below this low, we're definitely going back down to uh, the lows of about 2780 um, at least. So if you are in any long positions, probably look to probably look to take your profits um, or at least mitigate your risk. Um, I'm not saying we cannot bounce out of here. We could very well just bull flag and then bounce straight out of here and create some new all-time highs. Um, I just don't think that's going to happen. Now, if I take a look at the, the VIX, okay? So if we were, as you can see back here, this particular, this particular pattern, we've got the the higher high and then a little bit of a lower low here, but with a lot of, you know, reversal happening here. So we pretty much had the same thing. We had the first push higher, the dip, and then we had another push higher with a lot of reversal can candles here to push the market back up. So, and this was actually around the, uh, that's the seventh, um, that was around the, the start of November. And then right now, where I said the 8th of October, which is right here. So what's interesting about this, we had a nice little bullish candle, a little small little gap down, bearish candle, the small little gap down, gap down from the previous day. So we had a gap down from the previous day, bearish candle, small little gap down, and a nice little bullish candle. Um, so from here, if we do potentially roll over, and uh, this is... If, and I just kind of copy what, what happened back in November. This is a little bit of what it may look like. Um, just, just moving forward. Um, this is purely just my opinion. Um, I'm just kind of giving you guys a little bit more of an outlook on what, what could potentially happen. Um, and I'm going to talk about 
the uh, the Hang Seng, the Asian markets as well, um, as they're talking about, you know, they've got fears of recession as well. I know there's a lot of trade talks and talks about the there being another recession, which could very well happen. Um, here's the IWM. IWM, we did break this support here. Had a nice little morning star reversal, uh, but came straight to the 20 and are reversing. So, guys, most likely we're going to come back down to 146.80. And from here, we really need to bounce. Um, but that's the IWM. We didn't really create any new all time, uh, new higher highs like we did on the SPY. Um, so, I wasn't, I'm not overly bullish on the markets. I'm just very neutral to a bit bearish at this current moment. Here's the Hang Seng. So what's interesting about the Hang Seng is we did come back down to the lows from you know October through to December, back down here where the whole market did have a fairly decent pullback. And uh, if you take a look at the weekly chart, and I'll just bring on these long-term moving averages, we, we have currently come straight to the 200 uh, and we are forming a very nice bullish candle and a cute little morning star reversal pattern off the 200 simple moving average. So, I mean, could we potentially bounce? Uh, I think all eyes are on the Fed right now um, to, see what, to see what transpires tomorrow, um, but we'll see. And... Uh, Obviously, with the Hang Seng, we did come down and re resist the 10, uh, sorry, the 100 simple moving average on the daily. So, uh, very, very interesting times ahead uh, on, on the overall markets. But um, let's take a look at some stocks. So, we've got Facebook here. Um, beautiful uh, more evening star reversal pattern, resisting the 100. Most likely, We'll probably trade back down to the 200 if we do start to sell off, and uh, that would be a nice little dip buying opportunity on that one. Uh, take a look at Microsoft, MSFT, and this is just another one as well. So we did have a retest gap two days ago, and right now just having a little bit of a pullback, and most likely we'll probably fill this gap tomorrow, and potentially fill this gap here from the gap and go just a couple of uh, just last week so if that does happen most likely we'll get a lot of choppiness like this and this is kind of what it would probably look like um, if we do start to have a little bit of a pullback uh, but just look to mitigate your risk and protect your protect your downside with put options if you do have any long-term positions here's apple now what's really interesting about apple on the daily we have got some beautiful uh, high wave candles here with long upper wicks, a lot of selling pressure uh, right here. And we did have a retest gap just a couple of days ago. So from here, most likely, if we break these lows, we're definitely going to start to close this gap and potentially come back down to the 100. And now Apple's such a massive company. Every time Apple generally sends sells off, it tends to move the market with it. Uh, so just bear that in mind um, if Apple does start to sell off. Here's ticker symbol SQ square. Uh, I drew this last week. Um, that this is what I thought would happen, which is just a pretty much a, a straight copy of what happened back here in May. Um, obviously, we can definitely pull back a little bit further, uh, but most likely we're probably just going to chop around here sideways for a little bit longer and maybe, maybe potentially come back down to these lows. We'll see. Here's HLF. I've uh, been very bearish on this company since uh, this day here, actually these days here. That's I've pretty much been bearish the whole time. Um, spoke to a lot of people about protecting their positions along here and we just, keep going lower guys uh, if we take a look at the weekly chart we did have actually on the daily we did have a a uh, mother of all evening star reversals here right there and that's at the lows guys so um, very very interesting if I take a look at the weekly chart where we needed to bounce was the 200 on the weekly and we just crushed straight through that and crumbled lower and so my next target on HLF to go long, 
um, or to a, at least see a little bit more buying pressure come in is 32.37, which is the uh, 100 on the monthly chart. So keep your eyes on that. If you're in HLF, uh, it's probably going to go down a little bit lower. And um, yeah, look to buy the dip long term after the market starts to recover because this will be a very nice pullback. As we have already pulled back, you know, a nice 40% from the highs. So keep your eyes on that one. Here's the All Lords. And this is a bearish engulfing candle, if I've ever seen one right here on the monthly chart, um, super bearish at the moment. On the weekly, we are just selling off fairly, fairly hard. And uh, we haven't yet, uh, we haven't quite yet come back down to the 50 on the weekly chart, but on the daily, um, what you can see is we finally broke this 50 day EMA. We've come back up, retested the 50, and now we've just come back down lower. So from here, um, if we do start to roll over with the market, um, 63.43 is probably going to be the first target to buy, um, or at least to, uh, for, or, or at least the short sellers will probably start to close out some of their positions. Um, but from there, guys, it could be a bloodbath. Uh, here's BHP. Oops, here's BHP. And if I just take a look at the long-term moving averages here, we did close below the 200 guys and we are continuing to sell off today was a beautiful gap and go white candle gapping down and we are gapping and going absolutely that's for sure so take a look at the weekly chart we still have a little bit more room to move most likely come down to the 133 um, and on the monthly chart looking long term it's about 31 which makes the most sense so Keep your eyes peeled on BHP for a long-term dip buying opportunity coming up in the next probably couple of months. Um, but here's APT, ticker symbol APT, Afterpay. Great company, still consolidating sideways like we've been speaking about. Another evening star reversal there happening across the board, guys. Uh, we do have the 200 simple moving average right here. Uh, at $20 exactly to the penny. Um, so from here, most likely just look to buy uh, if we do get a chance to come back down to the 200 simple moving average, um, but looks fairly neutral. We're probably going to chop around here sideways for a little bit longer, maybe even create some lower lows, get a few people trapped, and then you'll get a very nice long-term dip buying opportunity. Let's take a look at the bank, CBA. We did get a beautiful bounce off the 200 on the daily, and uh, we did have a cute little inside day bullish candle, and we did gap down, and we're looking not so strong. Uh, we still haven't closed above the, uh, we still haven't closed above the 100. Uh, if we do get a little bit, a little bit more of a sell-off, um, probably look to take this thing back down to the 200. Let's take a look at some commodities, bright, shiny gold. Uh, we have got a very nice inside day bearish candle as we speak on the weekly chart. Not a whole lot happening. I did say that most likely we would come back up to the 1549 level. Um, and we did push up very, very quickly, but we didn't quite make it. So just we're, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with this market um, and see what happens with the FOMC minutes because that does throw gold off, especially because there was talk about the interest rate drop. Uh, so keep your eyes on gold. There will be a lot of volatility tomorrow. And when, when there's volatility comes opportunity. Here's US, uh, here's crude oil. Now we are currently a little bit bullish. Um, I still do have this down, uh, this downward wedge here. Uh, and you know, around $56.93, $57 a barrel. So we're probably going to come up and test that hopefully. Uh, but we do have the oil inventories report tomorrow morning so if you are in any oil positions just look to probably lock in some profits or set your stops um, accordingly and then obviously FOMC minutes tomorrow as well and uh, take one more look at the Aussie dollar I'm pretty sure there's not a lot happening 
Uh, I think it's going dead sideways at the moment. Yep. So pretty much, guys, a lot of consolidation here happening. Um, this is a very, a very key value area. So from here, I'd just be looking to buy low and sell high. Um, there's probably going to be a lot more opportunities in the Forex market elsewhere. Uh, Aussie dollar is most likely just going to sit here for a little bit little bit longer i hope you enjoyed this review guys i'll be back on thursday with another real life stock review and remember love life live life and trade it i'll see you soon bye